Hi. Um, I have to apologise slightly about this first slide. I, I picked a PowerPoint template and I didn't have time to change the, the images from the ecology theme. So just quick straw poll. Um, who here has never heard of Gutenberg before? Anyone? <laughs> One or two. So who has actually tried Gutenberg? Okay, so, so most of you. Um, so if, if you don't know what Gutenberg is, it's uh, the new WordPress editor that's coming in, in WordPress 5. Um, it's not got a release date yet for WordPress.com. It's going to be coming into self-hosted WordPress. And the editor is block-based. So at the moment with the current editor, we're used to writing everything in one giant text box. But this new Gutenberg editor is basically going to separate out content into blocks. So we're going to have uh, an image block, a paragraph block, a heading block, audio block, and so on. Gutenberg was first released as a plugin in June last year. Uh, it's currently got over 600,000 active installs. I think more people have actually installed it, um, but these are the ones that are active at the moment. And the classic editor will be turning into a plugin. It won't be gone completely, but when Gutenberg comes in, that will become the new default WordPress post editor. Um, the release date was going to be November the 19th, i.e. just after this WordCamp. That has now been shifted by the eight days onto 27th November. Um, but that's still actually a busy period uh, for people because that's Giving <laughs> Tuesday right after Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And um, one of the commentators on the WP Weekly podcast just said, uh, there's no time in the holidays that's a really good time for code deployment. So make of that what you will. So how did we get here with <coughs> Gutenberg? Well, if we go back, in January 2017, when the whole talk of creating a brand new editor came out, the WordPress design team asked on their blog, what makes a great editor? And they asked for feedback from various people on that. So here are some of the responses that they got from what users wanted from a new editor. So they were thinking about what does the current editor do well? What does it not do well? What, would, how, what kind of improvements would, would we like to see? So some of the themes that come out um, in these comments are simplification. Some people are saying current editor is too complex. I, I want it to be simplified down so it's easier for me to use. Um, another issue is discoverability. So some things are basically hidden away in the current editor and people haven't used them just because simply they didn't know that they were there. Um, then another person has commented that um, we've, we've had quite a large proliferation of um, WordPress page builders because the editor as it stands is fairly basic and it can't build complex layouts, not without using custom code or uh, using short codes or um, page builder plugins which have come into the market to fill that need. So somebody is saying, well, you know, maybe the new editor should be fulfilling part of that need instead of us using all these other plugins. And someone else has uh, said, well, the, the user experience for the current editor is not good on mobile. Let's go for a mobile first approach, get it right on mobile, and then other devices and desktop will follow. And uh, early in this discussion, this idea of blocks came out. So people suggesting that different types of blocks could be portrayed and styled differently on the page. So it seems to be a very flexible system. Um, a couple of other comments I've picked out here, which I think are also quite pertinent. Um, so the first one is from a guy called Mark Root Wiley, who works uh, a lot in the, um, the third sector, the non-profit sector. And he's basically highlighted the need for new editor to be accessible. It should be portable. And the job of the editor is not designing, he thinks, it's communicating. So perhaps that's maybe a kind of play for something anti-page builder, you know, not a let's have it, you know, build something really, really complex with lots of columns and things, you know, it, it should be simple. And someone else saying, 
it, ha it ha has to be something that covers a multitude of uses because there is no one way that people use the editor. Everybody goes in and does different things with it. So something else we have to be mindful of. And I did a, a very uh, quick sort of Twitter poll just over a year ago, basically saying, well, how do you add content to WordPress? Do you go straight in and start writing in the editor or do you do something else? Do you create your content first from some other medium and then you go to the editor to finish it off, polish it off and, and publish it? And I thought this was quite interesting that the, the results here were split and um, I've put in the link to the tweets and you can read through the entire thread because people were mentioning a variety of different tools that were used. Uh, they were talking about things like Google Docs, Word, Notepad, Grammarly, Evernote, and saying, well, you know, it depends. Sometimes I'll go straight to WordPress editor, sometimes I'll go somewhere else and create my content in, and I'll come back to WordPress and finish it. So part of this workflow, I think, has to have that assumption in it that people are going to add content from other sources. So just summarizing some of the problems that we have with the existing editor. So if you look down at the bottom, we've got the screen options section and there's a number of different options there. And in this screenshot, I've ticked all of them, but not everybody knows that this screen options section is here and knows that these boxes are here and ticking all of them actually opens up new options in the editor. Um, I've already mentioned uh, short codes, so short codes being used um, sometimes to create layouts or, or other effects in WordPress, and they're, they're taking the place of writing actual PHP code into the editor, which would be regarded as unsafe. But they're not very pretty when you look at them on the page and, and when you look back at your, your posts. Um, embed discovery is an issue. Some people don't realize that just simply pasting a YouTube URL will embed that on the page, and then there are many other examples. And it's not necessarily true WYSIWYG experience when you use the existing editor, because as many people have found, you can <clears throat> create something in the editor, and then when you actually publish it and look at it on the site, it doesn't look quite the same as the way you created it. So <clears throat> this is the stated aim of Gutenberg from the GitHub repository where it's being created. <laughs> so we've got three, three elements, I think, to this. Um, so one of them is we want to create a builder. So we're going to create something that makes rich posts effortless. So that also incorporates something that is easy to use. And I think there's a discoverability element to this as well. So um, where people are using things um, that they, you know, or they don't know how to use things that they don't know how to use, then Gutenberg wants to make that more transparent. And another, <clears throat> another aim of the whole project is to win users in other markets. So people who've got used to the likes of Squarespace or Medium or Wix to try and get some of that user base to come to WordPress. <clears throat> so uh, I kind of stole this a little bit. I was at Accessibility Scotland a week ago and um, one of the speakers there mentioned these UX principles, so I thought it would be quite useful to go through them. These are from a guy called Peter Morville. So these are seven principles of UX that should be incorporated into when you do any kind of um, software design. So first point in being useful, well, that is absolutely not in question. An editor is absolutely integral and essential to WordPress. We can't get away from that. Um, we, want, we also want to need it to be usable. We need people to use it the way that it is intended to be used. And it should be something that people actually want to use, desirable. Then we need to have people find what um, they need to use in the UI. They have to be able to complete their objectives somehow. Uh, accessibility is also a really important value. So about 20% of the population have some kind of disability and absolutely Gutenberg should be accessible to all of those people. Credibility, the editor has to have 
people having trust and faith in it. And finally, valuable. So there is a lot of excitement about the potential of Gutenberg. It, it should open up the WordPress project in some regards. It should open up the possibility to create custom blocks, for example. So what do users think of Gutenberg so far? So it's been out uh, as a plugin for about a year and four months. So I, I was going to say more about these, but I'm just going to put the links in so you can go off and explore for yourself. But a few people have done um, some user testing of Gutenberg. Uh, David Bissett was recently uh, posted this post about um, his experience of high school students using Gutenberg. And, uh, and they seem to get on pretty well with it. They seem to take to it uh, really well and had no major, major issues. Tenup have done a couple of different user tests. Um, They've done one in June and they did one in November and they found that the system usability scale that they tested on, that the values had increased in that time. Um, but these are all very small scale studies. Uh, the, the first study there only had 40 participants, the second one had 10 and the third had five. And also, well, in the first one, most of them were not familiar with WordPress, but in the other two, they definitely were. So the biggest amount of user testing we've had is from WordPress.org, um, people leaving reviews. And we've got now, th this was taken on Wednesday, this screenshot, we've got over 1,500 users of Gutenberg. And as you can see, it's a pretty high proportion of one-star reviews. It's actually really split. There's there's a reasonable number of five star reviews. There's a lot of one star. There's not too many people that are somewhere in the middle. But you do have to take this maybe with a pinch of salt because these are all time reviews. These have not been separated by version. And people who tried a very very early version of Gutenberg and got a negative impression, then that's not representative of where the project is now because it's been through so much development since. But having said that, um, this is a quote from um, actually a really good post that I, I just uh, found the other day by Eric Danzler of Imagely. He makes the Next Gen Gallery plugin, huge, huge plugin, over a million downloads. And he said, he looked to the average for um, the Gutenberg reviews, and it does fall in line with what is stated um, in the star reviews. He says it's clear the plugin is not wowing potential users, and he is one of a few, well, maybe quite a number of voices, uh, high profile voices who've been saying, actually, maybe we should delay the release. You know, that's still not got all the, the bugs and issues ironed out. You know, maybe, maybe waiting a bit longer and, and sorting that is the, the right thing to do. So, other people have been saying the same include Joost de Valk of Joost and Mark Root Wiley, who I mentioned before, and Morton Rand Hendrickson. So I've just got a couple of uh, sample um, reviews here. This is one five-star review. So this is one person saying, great, easy to use, uh, love the block system, creates attractive blog posts. So they, they've got a good impression, clearly. Uh, and this one is the opposite. <laughs> None of the editors they've used was as obstructed to the writing process. Absolute worst editing experience ever. Um, solved a problem that didn't exist, created a different problem that didn't exist. So this is someone who's had a bad first impression. Will they go back to using Gutenberg? Don't know. So some of the other criticisms and concerns with Gutenberg I've, I've listed here. A, a big one is backwards compatibility. So there is a sense of worry that once five comes in and Gutenberg comes in, are, are all existing sites going to break? And obviously, plugin and theme developers have done a lot of work to avoid that happening. But Gutenberg completely changes the, uh, the Metabox system that the current editor has. And it all has to be rebuilt in the Gutenberg way. And we just 
you know, we know that the work has progressed on this, but we don't know 100%. We can't say with certainty that everything will work. Um, another point, I suppose the last one, just want to say briefly on that one. If you are a developer and you think, great, I want to make my own Gutenberg block, then that's good and please try. But the barrier to entry is actually quite high. I, I read a comment on a WP Tavern post where um, somebody was saying to learn everything that they needed to learn because Gutenberg is heavily based on React to JavaScript library. It wasn't just learning JavaScript, it was learning a lot of other things. And he said, I think it takes about 450 hours plus per developer to do this. So what about accessibility? Well, back in 2016, um, WordPress made a commitment uh, to release all, all new updated code that goes into WordPress core and bundle teams must conform with the WCAG 2.0 guidelines at level AA. Um, I'm not going to go into depth about what the WCAG 2 guidelines are. They're, they're, it's a long document. But basically, they cover um, the major categories of disabilities, which are visual, motor, auditory, and cognitive. And this is basically a requirement. This is not a nice to have. We have to remember that WordPress powers 32% of the web. And then if 20% of them have a disability, it is not an insignificant number of people. Uh, just going to skip over this very, very quickly. I've got three posts on my blog, so don't copy the links down. The slides will be available later. You can see from these different experiences I've had with testing Gutenberg and what's changed in that time. So some of the things that I've noticed have improved are, if you look on the left, we've got um, a couple of earlier prototypes. So on the the block selector, it was not possible to use the keyboard only. A lot of people use um, with disabilities can only use the keyboard, people with motor disabilities or people with visual impairments. And it wasn't possible to navigate beyond the blocks that you saw there. So there were a lot of unavailable things. Um, the calendar widget has also been substantially changed because at the time that I tested it, I was noticing um, the black line is where the focus is on the page, and it was actually behind that widget. It wasn't possible to actually pick uh, a date on that, that calendar widget. But fortunately, that's all been corrected now. It's, it's much better. We've also got a lot of keyboard shortcuts have come in from the classic editor, and new ones have been invented. We've got improved focus management. Uh, you couldn't publish a post initially. Now you can do that. And the search for blocks is a lot better. But we still have some items causing some friction. So even though we've got the keyboard shortcuts, it still needs a lot of keystrokes to create and publish a post. Um, we've got different kind of toolbars per block. So we've got paragraph toolbar at the top there, we've got a heading one, and we've got an image one here, and they all look slightly different. So it can be a little bit jarring, maybe going from one to another to another and not seeing the same familiar icons. Then we've got um, this three dot menu and that's got another whole set of options in there, including the remove block one, which is certainly something that people are going to want to be able to do. And maybe that should not be hidden away. So what's been going on recently with Gutenberg and accessibility? Well. Uh, we had a blow a, a number of weeks ago when uh, Rianne Rietveld left the accessibility team and she published this blog post on why. And there were a number of reasons, but um, some of the main ones were that one big problem was that the people in the accessibility team who are all volunteers know accessibility well, but they, they did not know React well, which is what Gutenberg is built with. So they were putting out um, bug reports and issues that were simply not getting fixed. And then sometimes when they were fixed, then in the next iteration of Gutenberg, they would actually introduce inaccessible code back again, which was obviously not good. And again, the, the keyboard testing for new components that were introduced into the editor, not enough done before that happened. 
And in uh, Vian's resignation post, uh, she mentioned this quote from Andrea Fercia, who's also um, on the accessibility team. And I put the highlights in here. Um, he has basically said um, what they found is the user experience is very complicated and that for people with accessibility needs, the new editor is barely usable, he says. And one big, big problem with this is accessibility has not been incorporated in the design process. And if you do know anything about accessibility, you know that it's something that should always be thought about from the beginning because thinking about it at a later stage means basically remediating things, which is a lot harder to do than simply building it the right way in the first place. Uh, and finally, Gutenberg is described as a regression in terms of accessibility level compared to the previous editor. Uh, and I think that's fairly telling. So um, after this, a few weeks later, um, we got this post on the accessibility status of Gutenberg. Uh, and again, I put the link in so that you can go off and, and read this in full for yourself. Uh, I'm a part of the team. Um, we have a weekly meeting on a Friday afternoon on Slack. Um, so here is an example of a couple of the things that they highlighted in the post. So cognitive load, um, this is me using the mouse admittedly to scroll through the post, but you can see there's a lot going on, that there's things popping up, we've got different toolbars, if I click on different things, the sidebar is changing. You know, this is perhaps a lot for some people to, to take in. And then maybe what you'd call inconsistency in UI. So going back to different toolbars doing different things and the classic editor as we know it, um, the, the buttons basically stay in the one place and it's the same ones. People know where they are with that. Gutenberg is definitely a step away from that. Uh, another of the concerns that the team highlighted are accessibility anti-patterns. So uh, here we've got an example. Um, basically, when you type in the editor, it's like one giant form. And a good accessible practice would be everything that goes on a form to label it. But we don't have that here. We've got placeholders. We've got the add title one, and we've got another one underneath. Now, when we have the cursor in add title, that's fine we can still see that we have to add the title there, but will we put the cursor below, we, we immediately lose the message. And then, you know, if, if we haven't been concentrating, then what we, we, we might get stuck. What do we actually do here? Um, and this is another one about um, iconography. So there's a, I, I recommend you check out this post. The best icon is a text label. It's got some good and, and actually using examples of um, how putting in um, icons can work or not work for you. But here I've got an example. This is the top bar of the editor and going through the, the various parts. And some of these things are fairly obvious what they do because the, the text is there, preview, publish. We understand what those do. But then when, when we go back to some of the other things, okay, that's add block, that undo and redo, we've probably seen. But what's content structure? What's block navigation? And then some of the other ones at the other end, settings, what does that do? Show more tools and options. Again, what does that do? It's not obvious. So yes, we've got the keyboard shortcuts in now, and this is very good. We've got a, a long list of them, and we've got them for Windows and Mac. Um, one issue that we've got here is um, with keyboard shortcuts, it's good if users can actually choose their own. Uh, and that's not possible currently with Gutenberg. They can't remap them to the, the keyboard um, strokes that they would like to use. We've also had a few cases of where their shortcuts have been changed. Um, the, the, I know that the one to delete a block was changed recently uh, because someone found that that was the keystroke combo that actually restarts Linux. So I've 
this one, I'm not going to go through everything. This is quite long. I did like a little um, demo of me writing a new post. And uh, it's, this is actually like a five minute long screen cap. So I don't have time to go through it all. But uh, you can see where the green um, line is there. That's a Chrome um, add-on that I put on, which is basically showing you where the focus on the page if you, is. If you are using the keyboard only, you're basically using the tab key mainly and the shift and tab to go backward and forward to the various interactive elements. So you can see as I'm going through here just how much keystrokes there are aside from actually typing in the content. And yes, we have got the shortcuts now to move between different parts of the editor, but it's still a lot, a lot of keystrokes. So at the end of the accessibility team statement, they basically summed up and they have, they have noted that the progress that Gutenberg has made, because a, a lot of work is being done, and, and don't, don't forget this, that the team is committed to, to making this as, as accessible as possible, and it is a core value of WordPress that it should be accessible. But they're saying, we believe that it's less accessible than the, the existing editor. Although there are some accessibility features that the classic editor doesn't offer that Gutenberg does. But the final statement is basically saying we can't recommend Gutenberg in its current state for anyone who has to use assistive technology. So the, the current thinking is when version 5 ships that there's going to be a message uh, in the admin saying, you know, do you use excessive assistive technology? Well, if you do, maybe you should be looking at carrying on with a classic editor. Gutenberg might not be there yet for you. Uh, so going back to our UX diagram, how does Gutenberg measure up? Well, we know that 600,000 people, or six, we, we know there's 600,000 installs of Gutenberg, but there are also 500,000 of the classic editor plugin. Now, does that mean that people are testing both, or does it mean that they've installed classic editor because they don't like Gutenberg? We don't know. Um, in terms of usability, we've seen mixed reactions there. Some people find the new interface very intuitive, and some people find it very unintuitive. And again, in terms of desirability, very polarizing reactions. Some people love Gutenberg, some people really hate it. Um, there's not too many in the middle. Um, the, whether things are findable, that's an interesting one because discoverability was one of the goals for the new editor, but it, ironically, it seems that people are still saying, but a lot of things are hidden away. Um, I know that they've just changed, for example, uh, people saying, oh, I couldn't edit a permalink in Gutenberg, and, and it does come up once you've t um, put the title in, it comes up above, but people weren't finding that. So in the, the next iteration, uh, there's going to be a section in the sidebar as well for that. Um, accessibility, th definitely the commitment's there, but it's not ready yet. And one of the key issues from that was that it just wasn't factored in from the beginning. Um, credibility, well, we can see some people have left the, the bad reviews, you know, they've, they've tried it, they don't like it, they've been turned off by Gutenberg, are they going to come back to it? Again, they, they might or they might not. And in terms of how valuable it is, well, plugin and theme developers have done a lot of preparation, um, but we have to wait and see what happens with the final release. But, you know, there could be some really good and progressive stuff coming out in this area. So if you want to help to make Gutenberg better, what can you do? Well, you can try the plugin as it is just now, or you can also download WordPress 5 as a beta version. It's uh, constantly being updated. I think we're on beta 5 just now. Um, you can add a response, there's a Gutenberg post where you can give your feedback. You can leave a review on the Gutenberg plugin page. Uh, if you have a GitHub account, you can create an issue there. 
And if you're in Clone, you can also join the WordPress, make WordPress accessible team. Uh, and I've been working on the Gutenberg user manual for assistive technologies, and uh, I'd love some help with that or, or feedback. You're more than welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs>